So I started making this cut, and I was pushing it through, and everything was going good. It was very cautious on how it worked. But then I did something even more foolish, and I pulled that piece of wood back towards me. When you do that, it's actually like giving control of that piece of wood to the blade, because you're not holding it the same way anymore. And when I did that, this piece of wood just flew off and hit my hand. And I knew immediately I was hurt bad because it, it hurt. And my first thought was, I want to do over. Because that was way too easy. I want to do over. And then I looked down. No! I just screamed as loud as I could. My middle finger was laying in my hand. My thumb was laying in my hand. My other two fingers, I didn't know where they were. But it happened just like that. This took a while to learn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Try snapping with your opposite finger. It's not easy. But just like that, everything had changed. There was no going back. I thought screaming no was such a good way to get a hold of my wife. So I did it again. I screamed no really loud. And then I looked for something to, to tie up my arm. And then I went to the door and I said, call 911, call the hospital, I've been hurt bad, I've got fingers missing and everything. And she had heard the first scream, and she was already walking towards the garage, and she just grabbed the phone. Three digits later, she was calling 911. Nobody ever laughs at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, right? I just told you. But she was calling 911, and um, then my son comes up the stairs. My son was playing a video game at the time. He was 13 years old. A video game he never played again. I asked him later, I said, how did you feel at that point? He said, Dad, I just felt like throwing up. But I knew you needed help. I said, I need you to grab that rag and tie it around my arm. And I don't know, maybe I said arms. Because <laughs> he started tying all my arms together. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, just the damaged one. And so he yeah, undid it, and then he just put it around the one arm. And then it came in the house. But that is where the danger was. It wasn't, it wasn't in the fact that uh, I couldn't have planned this differently or done something different. I chose to do it, which is really one of the reasons why it's hard to get a safety speaker who talks about their injury that they created. Because I have to tell all of you that I did this to it took a while to get out of the guilt of that moment. I told my wife, I want to take that piece of wood, I want to stick it in a frame, put it on a wall, so I can see it every day. And remind myself of how stupid I was. She said, it's going in the floor. So, <laughs> it's in the floor. Uh, I actually walk over it every day. It's right at the base of my stairs. Uh, the next couple pictures are a little nasty, but this shows the consequence of that one quick decision. The tools are unforgiving. The wood was following the laws of physics and just flying through the air. I had three pins in my hand, two in my thumb, holding my thumb on, one holding my middle finger on. I said to the doctor, I said, what's with that cut in, my, in the palm of my hand? I don't remember that. What was that about? He said, well, that's where we had to make an incision. Reach down to your arm and reattach your tendons to your fingers. One last one. I'm not sending you a message. <laughs> I do have to watch. <laughs> I, just, I, I cried the first time I saw this picture. I was like, I